Hello, students. Um, I wanted to post this video for you um, to walk you through the guidelines for our self analysis research project. Um, we are definitely at the point in the semester where we want to start focusing on that, um, especially for those of you who took that first midterm and did well on it and don't plan to take the second midterm. Um, this is where your energy should really be focusing on um, right now because the end of the semester comes quickly and, um, you know, procrastination is not our friend. So um, just wanted to post this for you to walk through the guidelines um, so that you understand what the expectations are. And if you um, have any questions after watching this, please feel free to reach out. Okay, so um, this is the homepage of our class on Canvas. You can access the assignment by clicking on either syllabit or assignments. Um, did I say syllabit? Syllabus. <laughs> It's been one of those days. Um, syllabus. Um, I like to click on syllabus because it has all of the assignments in order of their due date. So this is um, uh, an easier way to find it. We know that it's due at the end of the semester, so we just scroll all the way down and there we go. Self-analysis research project. Click on that and this is the page for the um, for both the uh, description of the assignment and also where you're going to submit the assignment. So I'll show you that a little bit later in the video. Um, but first and foremost, um, I want to make it very clear as to what this assignment actually is. Okay, so it is a self analysis research project. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to use the content you've learned in class and also content that you will find in existing research to engage in a self analysis. So you're going to choose some area of your personal child development and then you're going to analyze your personal experiences and development within that area. So um, when I say your personal child development, pretty much anything falls into this. This is a very, very broad topic. Um, so I don't want you to get too overwhelmed with thinking about, well, what does, what does she mean by personal child development? Basically choose something about yourself that you want to analyze in terms of understanding why you turned out that way, right? Why you are the way you are in this specific area. And the focus in this analysis is going to be on your experiences or your biology um, in terms of your childhood, right? So it's a child development class. So sh we should be looking at what did I experience in my childhood or what are some things that happened um, or developed from a biological perspective during my childhood that influenced the way I am now, okay? Why did I develop into the person I am or, or, you know, how did these things I experienced during childhood influence the way I turned out, okay? So that's basically the gist of it. You um, don't have to choose something that is um, specific to the sample that I give you. I'm gonna show you in just a minute that I have a sample presentation. Um, you can choose literally anything. Almost everything is on the table as long as it is about you and you are engaging in an analysis and you're supporting that with research. So that's the second kind of main point here is that this is a research project. So you need to be using research to support your analysis. And what that means is you're going to engage in this analysis and then you're going to go look for articles, research articles, academic research articles um, to support this analysis, to support what you're saying. And I'll show you an example of that when we get into the sample as well. But make sure you understand this is, um, you know, the, 
there are two main points here is that it's a self-analysis. It's about you. This is not about somebody else. This is not about your family. This is not about your parents or your children. This is about you. Um, and you are supporting that with research. Okay. So there are two parts to this assignment. You are going to write a paper and you're going to create a presentation. So the paper requirements are listed here. I'm going to let you read through those on your own. Um, but please make sure that you're using appropriate research. Peer reviewed journal articles are really the best kind of research you can use to support your analysis. And then also make sure you are writing in APA format. So this is a psychology class and therefore when writing we use APA. Those of you who are not familiar with APA format, don't worry, it's not that complicated. The main differences between APA format and MLA format, which some of you may be more used to, really just lies in how you cite your sources. So I've posted a document here on the assignment page that is a Word document that you can actually download um, or you can view it in the viewfinder. Um, I recommend that you download it because if you do, you then have a Word document that's already formatted in APA format with regards to like the font size, the spacing, your margins, all that stuff is already set for you. It already has the running head in there for you. Page numbers are already in there for you. So theoretically, all you would need to do is go into this document once you've downloaded it, delete all this stuff and just start writing your paper and you know that it's already formatted. Okay. Um, what you want to do before you delete all of this stuff is read it. Okay. So read through this document and this is going to give you details as to how to write an APA format and more specifically how to cite your sources. Okay. So again, this is where I see the biggest mistake in terms of APA format is sources are not being cited appropriately within the paper and also at the end of the paper. Okay. Um, at the end of the paper, you should have what's called a references page. And I apologize in this document, there's no page break, but in your paper, you should have a page break. Okay. So your references page should start on the next page. Um, and they should be listed in this format. Okay. So when you're trying to figure out if your paper is in APA format or not, please use this document as your guidelines. What I don't want you to do is Google APA format. If you do that, you're going to come up with all kinds of information that is really not necessary for this paper. It's going to tell you you need an abstract, you need a literature review, you need a method section. Those are all components of a paper that is written when you have conducted research, when you have gone and done a research experiment and you're now reporting on that research experiment. That is not what you guys are doing. You guys are just writing a self-analysis and you're supporting it with research. Okay, so please don't Google APA. Just follow these guidelines and then you know, if you've read the guidelines and you still have questions, reach out to me. I'm here. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Um, deadline and plagiarism, um, deadlines on Canvas um, and, uh, and your syllabus. Um, so check that out. And then for plagiarism, um, your papers are going to be run through a plagiarism checker. So please make sure that you're writing in your own words. It's just going to save us all a lot of headache and hassle and time. Um, I've put a plagiarism checker here that you can use to check your paper before you've submitted it. And what you're looking for is a score, um, an authenticity score of 75% or higher. So what that means is that 75% of your paper is written in your own words. Okay. The plagiarism checker basically just checks to see if what you have written exists anywhere on the internet. And if you are quoting something, then that's going to exist on the internet and that's going to be identified by, by the plagiarism checker as being plagiarism because it's just a computer software algorithm. It doesn't have the ability to recognize quotes. So when you are writing your paper, if you want to quote something, that's fine. And just know it's going to be identified as plagiarism. I understand that. Um, and that's why I give you that buffer, why you have a 25% kind of buffer here. Um, because I know you're going to want to quote some things and that's totally fine. Um, you just should not be putting more than 25% of your paper in quotes. Um, so make sure that you are checking your paper and writing for the most part in your own words. 
Um, presentation. Okay, so presentation requirements. Um, I am looking for pretty much the same thing as I'm looking for in your paper, but this is going to be in PowerPoint format. So what I want you to think of when you're developing this presentation is this is kind of like a preview to your paper, right? It's just the main highlights of your paper. Please do not copy and paste your paper into the PowerPoint. That is not what I'm looking for. Your PowerPoint should be basically what would you present to the class if you were presenting to the class. I'm not asking you guys to do a presentation. I'm just asking you to develop the presentation and you'll upload that and I'll grade that based on what you upload. Um, but it should be an APA format. You should be citing your sources um, and it should be aesthetically pleasing. So it should be something that's, um, you know, visually nice, that it looks nice for the person who's looking at it. It's easy to read for the person who's looking at it. Your font size is an appropriate size and color. Um, you have pictures, you have visuals. It's something that, you know, we would want to pay attention to if we were in the classroom looking at this. So um, you will be graded on aesthetics, um, but you'll also be graded on content and, you know, APA format and all of those things that are part of your paper as well. So I've posted a sample here. Again, you can download this um, if you want to look at it um, and go through it in more detail, but you can also view it in the viewfinder on Canvas. So um, in the viewfinder, you'll see um, my sample. What I chose to do was my social and personality development. Um, please keep in mind, this is just one topic. You do not have to choose this topic as your topic. Um, anything is on the table. Um, this is just kind of what spoke to me when I was developing this sample. So um, I chose to talk about my three strongest personality characteristics, which are that I am extroverted, that I'm family oriented, and that I'm God conscious, and talk about where those came from and how they influenced my social development. So that's why it's my social and personality development. Um, and what I want you to take out of this sample is one, the aesthetics. You'll see, you know, the colors are kind of, you know, nice. The font is easy to read. Um, the contrast between font and background is good. And then there are a lot of pictures. Um, the pictures I put are obviously all of like me and my family because that's just kind of what spoke to me in developing this. But please know that you do not have to share personal pictures if you don't want to. You don't have to, you know, I mean, I'm nosy. I love to see that stuff. But if you're not comfortable sharing that, you don't have to. Um, you can very easily make your presentation visually appealing by including things like infographics or charts, um, graphs, memes are a great way to get a point across. I just want to see some type of visual that is related to what you're talking about and um you know is visually appealing so pay attention to the aesthetics and then pay attention to kind of the structure right again don't worry so much about the topic but what you'll see as you go through this is that when i'm presenting the information i'm relying on the research to support my analysis okay so when i talk about how I'm family oriented. I am probably family oriented because I come from a collectivist culture. And so I mention collectivist culture and then I talk about the research. Research shows that individuals from collectivist cultures, such as Middle Eastern cultures, which is my cultural background, um, tend to be very focused on family. So research supports that. And oh, well, what do you know? I have an Egyptian father. And so um, as a result of that, I had a very collectivist upbringing. We did everything with a family. And that's probably why I am family oriented. And then I go into a couple of other um, examples of family orientation and, you know, how the research supports that and how that played out in my life. OK, so that's really what I want to see in terms of um, the presentation. Just follow the structure and, um, you know, make it visually appealing. I also want to see at the end you have your sources listed just as you would um, on your paper. I want to see it a slide that is all of your sources listed in APA format, okay? Um, don't worry too much about the topic. Um, it does not have to be the same topic. That being said, if you like the topic, go for it. Obviously, it's something I would approve of, um, but just follow really kind of the structure that you see laid out here in this sample. 
Okay. Um, deadline is listed on Canvas. Um, it is, there you go, right here, May 21st, 1159 p.m. And um, before you submit your paper and presentation, make sure that you are saving them as a PDF file. Um, I actually restrict the file upload to only PDFs. The reason for this, there's a couple of reasons. Um, the paper, it's not as big of a deal, but um, when you upload it as a PDF, it saves the formatting. So if you um, formatted your paper appropriately, I'm gonna be able to see that in a PDF more so than in a Word document. Some things can get lost in uploading when we upload it as a Word document. And then also the file sizes are smaller, especially with regards to your PowerPoint. So um, PowerPoint files are just really big. They take um, a lot of time to upload. When you're uploading it, it takes a lot of time to download when I'm downloading it for grading. Um, and it just takes up a lot of space in Canvas in general. So um, save your PowerPoint and your paper as PDF files and then upload them. If you don't know how to do this, reach out to me. I'm happy to walk you through it. It's really simple. Um, or you can Google it. I'm sure you can find uh, how to save a PowerPoint um, and Word document as a PDF on Google. Um, and then uh, submit it. Okay, so how do we submit? So I'm going to jump into student view so you can see what this looks like um, as a student. And when you see it as a student, you've got a submit assignment button right here. So you just click on that, takes you down to the bottom, and then you're going to go to file upload and choose file. So you have two files you're uploading. So the first file I'm going to choose, and let me find a PDF. Okay, so I'm gonna choose that. We're gonna pretend that that's my PDF. Sorry, let me move this up. Okay, and there it is right here. And then I'm gonna click add another file so I can add that second file, which is my presentation. And then another uh, button clicks for me or opens up for me. And then I just go get that next one. Let's say this is it. And there we go, I've got both of them here and then I just click on submit assignment and once I click on that I'm not going to because I don't want to upload these files um, but once I click on submit assignment it'll show up here on the assignment page and it's there it's submitted please do double check that your files are submitted appropriately um, because I have had so many students who will upload something for some reason it shows up as blank and I've got nothing to grade <laughs> and it's very sad for me because um, I'm not checking these until I start grading. Um, it really honestly is your responsibility to make sure that it's uploaded appropriately. Um, so please do that. Double check that everything is there. That when you click on the file, it shows up in the viewfinder and you can see it. Um, and that everything has uploaded, that your entire paper is there, that your entire presentation is there. Um, and everything's good um okay and then last but not least get started on this you guys get started on this as soon as possible this is um this is something that can be a total beast if you don't start it soon enough and you're stressing out and it's the last day of the semester and you're trying to get it uploaded and technical difficulties and all that stuff that just inevitably happens. So please don't procrastinate on this. Um, if you're struggling with a topic, reach out to me. I am more than happy to walk you through some ideas, bounce some ideas around and let you know if you're on, on task, if you maybe wanna change some things. Um, I'm here. Make use of me. I'm happy to help. Um, if you want to ask questions via email, please feel free to do so. If you want to set up a Zoom, please feel free to do so. Um, and um, we'll get this knocked out. All right. So um, if you have any questions, reach out. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing all of your super awesome self-analyses. All right. Have a great day, guys.